All right. Good evening. This is our biggest discretion. I think we've ever taken a margin of error of a minute 46. We're on the bottom of Membez Mudbez, about eight lines down at the word Aceve. We're going to be learning tonight until um, most of the way down on Mem Dalit Amid Aleph until the Mishnah. And we have to clean up a little bit from yesterday's sugya, and then we'll start a new one. Yesterday in the Mishnah, we had a machlokas about what moment in time what moment in time transitions from a knas to mamon? And our Mishnah, according to the Tanakhama, had said that it was ha'amada bedin, that when bezdin makes a psak, that the man who did something wrong to this particular woman is actually guilty and is chayiv, a certain amount of money, then once that leaves their mouth, once the psak din is over, the ha'amada bedin, it's over. But according to Reb Shimon, that wasn't true. It's only about transferring of... <coughs> transferring of actual monies. <clears throat> so let's look at the bottom of Mem Beis and Mabez, 10 lines from the bottom, eight lines from the bottom. Eisve, Rib Shimon, Hoter, She'eno Mishalem, Knas Al Piatmo. Rib Shimon was of the opinion that a person uh, in our Mishnah would be Pater because when you are Mode to a Knas, you don't pay that Knas. So says the Gemara, maybe we have an inference. Taima is the Ahmad Bedin. Maybe it's because there was no Ha'amad Bedin. There was no Bezdin that adjudicated this particular case. But maybe Ha'amad Bedin, Demishalim al Piatzmo, Korban Shvua, Demishalim al Piatzmo, Korban Shvua, Nami Mechai. Maybe Ha'amad Bedin, at least by inference, we could infer from Reb Shimon that Ha'amad Abedin is a valuable moment in time to transition from a Knas to Mamon. And that's Akashia within Rav Shimon himself. So the, we know Rav Shimon's Shita from our Mishnah. Rav Shimon from our Mishnah says it's all about the collection point. It's not about the Ha'amad Abedin. But the inference of this line of Rav Shimon rejects Rav Shimon himself. So therefore the Gemara says Rav Shimon wasn't talking about himself in that line. Great, great answer. No, 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 no. When I said that I owed you $100, I was speaking as though I was somebody else. That's what the Gemara says. Rib Shimon, Lidi, Vram, Dera, Bonon, Ka'amar, Lu. He was talking about them. Now let's go through. Lidi, D, Rib Shimon would say that according to me, Afal Gav, De Oman, Bedin, even though Amad, Bedin happened, doesn't matter. Rahman, Patre, Mi, Vikichesh, because of the Pasuk of Vikichesh. This is one of those times where you don't want to let your, uh, your reading skills go wrong. It looks like the word Mukhash which is incorrect. That would be a, uh, a rudimentary error in the reading. It's from the drasha, because that, as we learned yesterday, was the drasha through which Rav Shimon learned that the uh, that Ha'amad Abedin doesn't matter at all. So that, Rav Shimon says, I hold I hold stark on that and I'm not changing. Ela ledid chuba, Rav Shimon, speaking on behalf, he, he speaks on behalf of the Rabban, and according to you, Oduli mihas, at least admit to me that hecha de lo amad bedin, that when there was no Ha'amad Abedin, vichi katava, knasa katava, that the money that we're claiming is knas money, top of mem gimel amad alev, umode beknas pater, at least admit to me to that the basic din that 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 mode be knas should be pater. The rabbanan they say we're not talking about the knas dollars. The rabbanan sabre ki katava boshes upegam katava. We're not talking about the knas dollars. What we're talking about is boshes and pegam. We're talking about non knas. Knas is a fixed amount of money for something that you did wrong that isn't necessarily logical. It's not like mida keneged mida. It's not like that. Violating a woman should have an astronomical price. The Torah says 50 shekel, not today's shekel, old shekel. Doesn't matter, but it's a knas. What about boshes and pigam? That's always yachasit. That's always relative to the person. So that's the machlokes between them. But my kamifligi, what's the deeper argument? Why is it that Rab Shimon says we're talking about a knas and the Rabbanon say that we're talking about boshes and pigam? Says the Gemara Mem Gimel Amid Aleph, second line. Amar Papa, Rab Shimon Savar, Lo Shavik Inish, Midi Dekaitz. The tub immediately locates. No one is going to leave a fixed amount of income on the table. I know that that knas is 50 shekel. I'm collecting. So therefore, he's going to always go for that money, and he's not going to care about the midi de loci, the amount of money that isn't fixed. I don't know how much the boshes is. I don't know how much the pagam is. They got to take out their uh, abacus and figure out. I don't know. I don't know. So the guy, what's the psychology of the money? According to Rav Shimon, the fixed money is 50 shekel. Uh, the, maybe the boshes is. So I don't know. If, leave me be. I know what the 50 is, right? So that's like, you know, when you're on these shows, you're, would you rather have $100,000 right now or take whatever's behind door two. So Rabbi Shimon says, it's the vadai. Like, give me my 50 shekel, leave me be. However, Virabon on four lines down, Savre, they're of the opinion, lo shavik, he says, lo shavik inish midi dichi modile lo miftar. He's not going to leave something that had he admitted it, he wouldn't be putter. 
That's for sure. Not Vitova. Uh, and he's not going to ask for money that had he admitted that he would have been put. All right, so that's the end of this sugya, really, which was a discussion, again, about Rib Shimon and the Rabbanan and uh, what it takes to transition monies from Knas to Mama. The Gemara now changes gear six lines down on Mem Gim Lamed Aleph. This will take us, this sugya will take us to the next mission on the top of the next page, and then one more longer sugya, and then we will uh, we'll stop for the night. Says the Gemara, Bamine Rebi Avina Me Rav Sheshes, Bas, Let's say that there is a girl who is being fed through her brothers. What does that mean? It means that the father died. With the halachos of Yerusha, the brothers got money from the father. The daughter has no money. She's now a sister to the, to the Yorshim. So she gets fed through the father's estate that the brothers control. So bas hanizones min ha'achin, What happens to her income? We know that if a boss, if a daughter, let's say she's 10 years old, she has a job. It's not really like that in our culture, right? We're, we're lazy until we're like in college and then we're still lazy. But the Gemara says here, let's say she worked. And then where does her money go straight to the father? Okay, what if the father died? Do we treat the brothers as though they're a replacement for the father or no? Do we say that the brothers really are just a a surrogate of sorts that they're replacing the father? And And just like by the father, her uh, proceeds would go to the father. Hachanami by the brothers, so too they would get that money. Odilma, or perhaps, really, maybe there is no similarity between the brothers and the father because Hasam Midide Mitzina, really, before her father died, who fed her? Her father, through the, her father's money. And Hacha by the brothers, whose money is she eating? It's not the brother's money. They're just the gatekeepers of the, uh, of the estate. They're not the ones who are actually feeding her. They got a bank account from the life insurance policy of a million dollars, whatever it is. So they gave her a debit card to go. That's not the brother's money. So do we say that when the father died, that the daughter is going to be benefiting from the food through the father's estate? Are the brothers like the father and therefore her handiwork goes to the brothers? Or are the brothers not like the father? So that's what the Gemara's question is. Omar Le, the Gemara says about 12, 15 lines down, Tani Tuha, we've already learned this in a Tanaic source. What's the Tanaic source? Almana, if there is a widow, Nizones Minichze Yisomen, she is able to benefit from the food of the children. So her husband died, she became a widow, and they have children. So the, the children got some of the Yerusha. She's able to be supported from those children. Umayse Yadeha Shelohen. And where do the monies go? Her proceeds, the wife, they go seemingly to the Yisoman. Well, that was very, very similar to our question. That's why the Gemara brought this. We already learned this in the Mishnah. It says the Gemara, whoa, 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 whoa. These cases are not quite comparable. Let's repeat. Case number one, father died. There's a daughter and a bunch of sons. The daughter lives off of the money from the estate that the brothers own. Case number two, the Almana the mother's still alive. Husband dies. The mother's still alive. The mother is supported by the Arusha money that went to the estate. Okay. So we're saying, oh, they're, they're obviously very similar. So if the if the daughter can benefit from the estate, then the mother can benefit from the estate. What do we see from there? It must therefore be that the money that the daughter makes must therefore go to the brothers. That's what it seems like. That's what it seems like. It says the Gemara, me dummy? Is that really similar? Are these two cases similar enough? Almanasa lo nichale beharvacha. The father wouldn't have wanted his uh, his wife to get rich off of the deal, but bito nichale beharvacha. But he would prefer that his daughter get more proceeds. A little bit of a uh, got to be careful here. What what? It, how do you prioritize? You know, like it's like your halachic will. You have to put a pecking order in uh, of which person you care about more. The Gemara is seeming to say that the the husband would have preferred. I don't know how this works, but maybe the dad's like, I want my kids to have more. My wife will be fine. I don't know what the psychology is. That's what the Gemara seems to say. Lememra, what does that imply? Dibito adifale me almanoso. Is that to imply that the daughter is on a higher level than the almana, than her own mother? That's not so simple. I agree with you. No, it's not Ksuba. There's no, he died. It's not a, it's not a divorce, but yeah, no. oh, you, I'm sorry, you get a Ksuba, yeah, you get a Ksuba, yeah, that's correct. But it doesn't matter because maybe the Gemara doesn't say that, and the Gemara is not the Gemara should have responded that way if that's what it was. That's what the Gemara says. But Amar Rebbe Abba, Amar Rebbe Yosi, Asu Almana Eitzel Habas Kibas Eitzel Achen 
In a particular case where Asu Almana, they made the Almana as it relates to the daughter, like the daughter is to the brother when there's very small amounts of, uh, of Yerusha. If there's only a small amount of money, the girls get the food and the brothers have to go knocking on the doors to go get themselves food. There is a, there is a pecking order. So we have the opposite of what was implied. It was implied that the daughter, that the daughter has a greater level of importance to the father who died. And here we see explicitly that the almana gets the food and the daughter has to go knocking if there's only a little bit of food left. Okay. Says the Gemara, you're right. You're actually both right. When it comes to a zilzal, then almanaso adifale. He's more conscientious about his wife going through a, a going through a zilzal than his daughter. However, Lenin Harvacha in regards to proceeds, in regards to having more money, Bito All right, I, we, that we can probably digest a little bit better. But uh, that's what the Gemara says is the distinction between when the wife is put on the pedestal versus when the daughter is put on the pedestal. We're just about halfway down, Mem Gimel Amadal. Says the Gemara. Hold on one second. Masiv Rav Yosef. We had learned this previously, that a woman's um, proceeds from work, any items that she may find, even though she didn't actually collect them yet, that if her father dies, who would have been the normal recipient of these proceeds, then the monies go to the brothers. Says the Gemara, that's only because she got these things, the monies and the, the lost items, during the life of the father. But but had it been that the father was already dead, and then she got her paycheck, so then that money goes to her and not to the brothers. Why did her paycheck go to the father before? She's a daughter. So it's always like, it's always like that. If she's if she's so mechal shochano, she's eating from the house, then her monies go go to the father. No, but during his lifetime, it would have gone to the father. Would have gone to the father. So if the money was, let's say, let's say the father died on February 1st and she got a paycheck on January 1st, but never picked it up until March 1st. So she got paid on March 1st. She got the check was written on March 1st. Her husband, her father died on February 1st. And then she actually got the check to bring to the bank on March 1st. That money goes to the brothers because she earned the money during her father's life. Therefore, should have gone to the father, defaults to the brother. But if the father died on January 1st and she gets a paycheck on February 1st, that's Clean, clear and clean. That's hers. That's her. doesn't even go to the brothers. It's only when the father was alive when that check was written. Again, we're speaking conceptually, but that's basically the idea. So says the Gemara. We see this brisa. My love, isn't this a case? Bit where she's actually eating food from the brothers, namely through the estate of the father, uh, through the father's estate, through the brothers, and therefore we see that she gets the money to herself, and it doesn't go to the brothers, Kasha and what we just learned. Because we learned when we started this piece of Gemara, um, you know, 10 lines down, when we started this piece of Gemara, we had said, oh, no, the money goes to the brothers. Money goes to the brothers? No, it doesn't. Because we see from here, the money doesn't go to the brothers. What did we say? That if the father had already died and then she got her paycheck, she keeps the money. So it says the Gemara, no, 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 no. no that's not what the case is. The case is Bishain and Nizonis. She's not being supported by her brothers. So then the Gemara says, if she's not being supported by her brothers, of course the money's going to go to her. The only havamina, that the only thought we would have ever had, that the paycheck that she got, that it's going to ever maybe even possibly go to the brothers is if the brothers were feeding her father's estate to her. If she was getting money that way. But if if not, that's what the Gemara says. Of course the money's going to go to her. Even according to the one who says in an extreme case, a master can say to his servant, a non-Jewish servant, an Eved, you're my slave, do as I tell you, but you still have to go find your own food. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's a normal, I don't know if it's normal, but it's, it's not nice, but it is what you what it's mutter to do. Because by an Eved, they're not Amcha, they're not part of, part of Klal Yisrael. Aval, says the Gemara, and Bito. There's no, there's no possibility that we could ever say that uh, that she wouldn't have gotten the money in this case. Of course, she's going to be the one to get the money. 
So says the Gemara, Omar Rabba Bar Ula, Lo Nitzrucha Eloloha Adafa. What is it that we were talking about over here where the money goes to her? We're not talking about the principal money. We're talking about extra money. That if there was more money than she made than she needed for food, does that money go back to the brothers? So they, there the Gemara says, no, she keeps that as well. So let's say it costs her $50 a week to eat and her paycheck is $60. So the Havamin of the Gemara was that she can keep the 50 for herself, but the extra 10 that she gets goes back to the brothers. Kamashmal on that that's not the case. She keeps all of the money. If the money was earned after her father died, that would be a racket. If, if, if every, every, uh, amount, every penny above her minimum requirements go to the brothers, do you know how that would rock the world when there's Yerusha? It's crazy. It would be a huge nafkaminas. This doesn't uh, didn't work out that way. But okay, Amar Rabba, hold on one second. Rav Yosef is the one who asked this question. The great Rav Yosef says the Gemara. Gavra Rabba Rav Yosef lo yada de ikaha adafa the kamosi to yufta. He didn't know this most simplistic answer. No, no, no. We're talking about the extra dollars. Rav Yosef, that's a klutz. Uh, it's a klutz answer. Like it's it's so easy. It's a layup. There's no way he didn't know it. How can you? And now he's using it as a tiyuvta to what we learned earlier. No way. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's funny because like we don't. I don't like. I didn't really like relate to the simplicity of the question. I I thought there was. What do I know? I don't know. It's great. But the gemara is saying this is a terrible. It's a terrible answer. It's saying like Yosef, of course he knew that. So okay. So that's what the gemara says. So now we have to re-understand. Says the gemara two thirds of the way down a little bit more. El Amar Rava, Rav Yosef really must nisan gufa kashile. He really had a difficulty with the Mishnah itself. Why? What did our Mishnah say? Our Mishnah said de katani umtsiasa that. These two things, her financial proceeds and any items that she finds, that Afal Pishalo Gafsa, even though she didn't collect them, she didn't collect them. How do you find an object and not collect it? How do you bring an object that's lost into your possession without collecting it? Says the Gemara, Mitsyasa, Miman Gavya. It's like a like a tongue-in-cheek rhetorical question. Like, and, and did she really collect it? How, how did she collect it if you, she didn't pick it up? She either picked it up or she didn't pick it up. <laughs> so Rabbi Yosef says, <clears throat> El -la, really hachikama. This is the right way to understand the Mishnah. It's not Maiseyadeha and Mitsyasa. It's Maiseyadeha Kimitsyasa. That her proceeds are similar to a lost object. Rav Yosef's question was getting to the deeper part of the Mishnah that there's no such thing as a mitzia that you don't pick up. Of course you pick it up. You see a lost object, you pick it up. Now I have a mitzvah of Shavasaveda. But you picked it up. What do, you mean, what do you mean, Achilo Gavsa? How could the Bryce even say you didn't pick it up? He did, she did pick it up. So he says, therefore, it's not talking about a lost object. We're saying that her proceeds are similar to a lost object. How so? Just like a lost object, had she found it during the life of her father, it would go to the father. And after her father's death, had she found an object, she'd keep it. The same exact thing would be true with her financial proceeds. And now we see that this principle is correct. That after the father dies, any monies that the sister earns, that the, I guess the daughter and the sister of the brothers earns, she keeps, she does not give to the brothers at all. Good. So that was what the Gemara says. Uh, and now we're going to see a reflection of this uh, in other Amo Rhyme. Itmar Nami. Itmar is always an introduction to uh, to an Amoraic statement. Amar Rabbi Yehuda Amar Rab, Bas Hanizones Min Ha'achin. If there is a daughter who gets food through brothers, now obviously it's not their money, it's a state money, it's her, it's her Yerusha money, or their Yerusha money, Maise Del Atzma, because it's not their money and it's really the estate's money, so she is not going to have to give over her hard-earned income to them. Amar Kahana Mai Taima, what's the reason for this? Why is it that the money goes to her? The Gemara says in regards to a Pasuk by, uh, by an Eved, You're allowed to give over an inheritance. You can give an Eved as an inheritance to your children after you. You can give over the Eved as an inheritance to, to, to your sons. But you can't give over the daughters to your sons. In other words, it's a little bit of a code. You can't give over the daughter's salary to the brothers when the father dies. So that's what the Gemara says. Magid, what does this teach us? She'ein adam morish zechus bito livno. A man cannot give over the proceeds of his daughter to his sons when the father actually ends up dying. 
Maskifla Rava. Rava, hold on one second. That's not the only way to understand the Pasuk. Says the Gemara, Ve'emo bepitui habas, ve'knasos ve'chabalos akasuf medaber. Maybe the Pasuk was talking about something else. It was saying that you're not allowed to give over the monies of Pitui had she been seduced, the, the knas that's given there. And for knasos, you know, the, the flat fee for things that people may have done wrong and chabalos injuries. So maybe that's what the Pasuk was talking about. And you can't make the inference that you wanted to make that that a father can't give over his daughter's proceeds to a son. Rebbe Chanina also felt that that was the pasuk was taught. That's what the pasuk was talking about. That can't be. And using only one of these as an example, chabalos tsara. Let's say that a woman gets injured and she gets money for that for tsar. That's the gufa ninu. That's she got injured. Why would the brothers ever get that money? That's ridiculous. That money belongs to her. It doesn't make sense at all. So therefore, uh, Amar of Yossi, Bar Hanina, as we turn to the top of Mem Gimel and Mebez, what is a scenario in which we might have understood the Pasuk that way? That's Shephatza Bifaneha. If she got a scar, she got a mark on her face, one that Rashi highlights is the Ifchasa Rashi says, Dibur HaMaschil, Shephatza Bifaneha, she got an injury on her face. The Ifchasa Mikaspa, had she been sold, this uh, sword mark on her face will lower her cost, will lower her value. So it is possible that those monies then do go to the brothers. So basically, the point is that uh, it's not so clear how to learn the psukim here. But don't worry, because we still have the same exact psak. Because as we say on the top line of Memgiam Alamid Beis, Amar Reb Zera, Amar Reb Masna, Amar Rav, Amar Reb Zera, Amar Reb Masna, Amar Rav, says the Gemara, the difference between Rav and Rebbe Zera, the one would be an Amora, one would be a Tana. Usually that's a distinction. What did they say? Same exact principle again, listed by other Amor Raim, quoting the same Pasuk again, that the Torah tells us that one is allowed to give over an Eved to his children as a Yerusha. Yes, you can give over an Eved, but you cannot give over your daughters to your sons. What does that mean? That one is not allowed to give over as an inheritance, the Bito, the monies that she earned over to the to her brothers after the father dies. Amar Le'avimi, Bar Papi, Shikod Amra. This was said by Shikod. What does that mean? Who's Shikod? Shikod Manu, who is that? Shmuel. It's, it's like calling him the Masmid. Like he sat behashkoda. He he sat there and that's a nice nickname. So he was the Shikod. Says Gemara, that's not true. It wasn't it wasn't Rav at all. It wasn't Shmuel at all. It was Rav. Harav Amra. Says the Gemara, you're right. Ema Af. Shikod Amra. Even Shmuel said it. Namely, everybody was holding this way that that's the din. That if a father dies, then all of the monies that the uh, that his daughter makes, they she gets to keep them herself. Amar Marbar Amemar Leravashi Hachi Amri Nahardai. What did they say in Naharda? Hilchasa Kavase de Rav Sheshes. Ravashi Amar Hilchasa Kavase de Rav Machlokas. Do we say that the money goes to the father, to the brothers, or the money goes to? Uh, to the to the sister, the Hilchasa Kavase the Rav So we pask in this way. The Gemara holds this way that when a uh, a woman loses her father and she has brothers who got the Arusha based on the Psukim of Nachala, the halacha is that even if she is going to be fed through the estate that the brothers now possess, she still gets to keep all of her proceeds, all of her salaries to herself. That brings us to a new mission on Mem Gimel Amid Beis. I'm hopeful that we'll finish this in time. Um, Ari says, Bito Vigirsha, speaking more about the monies that a father may earn through his daughter. If a man gives over his daughter in betrothal to him, uh, if a, uh, the father gives over his daughter to another man in, in betrothal, Vigirsha, and then they got divorced. And then again, Irsa, she got engaged again, but Venice Armala. And then she, then her fiance died. Subasa Shalom, the father gets that money. Well, um, and then a, a little bit differently, what if he see of a gear show? What if it wasn't just proposal? What if she fully got married and then she got divorced? Or he see of Vinis Armala and then she got married again, second full marriage, not just engagement, second full marriage, Vinis Armala. Then Ksuba Sashela. Then she gets to keep those Ksubas. Rabbi Huda, however, argues on the Tanakama. Rabbi Huda Omer, it's not black or white. It's not both go to her or both go to him. That's not correct. Rather, Omer Harishona Shalab, the first, uh, the first marriage, Ksuba, the first bad marriage goes to the father, but the second one does not. Amru Lo, the Chachamim said back to Rabbi Huda, How can you say that? Even the first marriage, once it's a full marriage, he has no Rishus to that Ksuba anymore. He's no longer uh, Shaykh to the daughter in this particular way. Fine.
Gemara makes a quick diuk over here, one that brings us back to a very large shas concept, and we're not going to dig into this, but it is important to, to see every once in a while. Says the Gemara, a third of the way down, as the Gemara opens on Mem Gimel Amid Beis, Taima de Hisiya Begirsha Hisiya Benis Armala. The reason why we have the halacha in our Mishnah the way it is, is because of the case that we described where she got married once and got divorced, and then married another and became a widow. Aval. Nis Armala Tre Zimne, but if she got married once and the husband died, got married again and the husband died again, Sulo Chazili in Sube, she's not allowed to get married again. Why? Because everyone she marries dies. So says the Gemara, what do we infer from here? Ve'agav urche, just a little bit, just in passing, a tangential inference from our Mishnah. It seems that our Mishnah is holding like Rebbe, De Omar betray zimne havya chazaka. <clears throat> that in two episodes, we are able to see that we hold that a chazaka is established in simply two. This was made, uh, this inference was made possible by our Mishnah laying out the cases of Hisia Venis Karsha and then Hisia Venis Armala. So the Gemara says, oh, why, did, why wasn't the first case listed as a, as a case of Nis Armala as well? <clears throat> so that's what the Gemara says. But, because if the Gemara wanted to say that we that the Chazak is established in three, then the case in the Mishnah should have said Hisia, Hisia Nis Armala. That would have been two marriages. Okay. And then the Gemara wouldn't have been able to say what it just said. But by virtue of the fact that it made the first case marriage followed by divorce, and the second marriage was marriage followed by death, the Gemara says, Why didn't you make both cases Nisarmala? So the Gemara says, We therefore see that it's Chazaka. It's, and even the Gemara will tell you, You're right, Rabbi Yaakov. The Gemara says, It's not like an ironclad diuk, nor is this the. the this isn't the centerpiece of the sugya, but it's a uh, derech agav. It's a little. Remember, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi wrote the Mishnah. It's a little. Uh, it's like weaving your signature into a painting. You know, it's, uh, everybody knows that it, that is him. The Gemara says halfway down, at the two dots, Rabbi Yehuda Omer Harishona Shel Ab. We had said that in these cases in our Mishnah, <laughs> that the father <coughs> really should have gotten the first ksuba, not the second one, but he should have gotten the first one. So why is that? My time of my time of Rabbi Yehuda. And the Gemara says, we're going to see that this is actually an error, but the Gemara says that here's one version of Rabba ver of Yosef. Rabba ver of Yosef, because when was it that the father was Zoha to the Ksuba? During Erisin, during the betrothal period. Okay, let's see if this holds up to the test. Masiv Rabba. Rabba says, hang on one second. Remember our Mishnah is Rabbi Huda. Okay. Then the Gemara says, Rabbi Huda Omer Harishona Shal Av. That's what we just said in our Mishnah. But Umo de Rabbi Huda Bimare says Bitok Shehiktana Ubagra. Then in a very specific case elsewhere in Shas, where uh, he marries off his, he betrothes his, he gets his daughter engaged to someone when she's a Ktana Ubagra, and then she turns to be twelve and twelve years and six months old. We have another case with Rabbi Huda, the same exact Tana, who says, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't get the Ksuba in this case. Am I? Why wouldn't he get this, the Ksuba? If it's really true in the mechanics of betrothal, that once they're halachically engaged, the father earns the rights to the Ksuba, then why in this other case would he not earn the rights to the Ksuba? May <laughs> Stay consistent. So says the Gemara, you're right. Really, we misunderstood Rabba and Rabbi Yosef's answer to our question. We had asked, why is it, we had asked, why is it that Rabbi Yehuda was of the opinion that the first, uh, the first broken marriage, the Ksuba goes to the father? And here's the other, the, the now more accurate reason. Rabbi of Rabbi Yosef, Damri Tarvayhu, Hol or Birshuso Nichtavin. Also a bit of a complex answer. That the, it was written in his Rishus. The Ksuba was written there. This requires a little bit of research. Take a look at Rashi. Rashi is two thirds of the way down, a little bit higher than that, actually. Rashi says, "Ksuba harishona shahaya lefana lifne hanisuin vehilkach bagra kodem nisuin lo nichtava birushusa." The first one was written in his rishus. What we would need to see within Rashi is who cares? Who cares if it was written in his rishus? That's what that's what the Gemara says. Maybe there was a Kenyan made. Fine. Says the Gemara, "Umigba meemas gavia." This is actually uh, quite a complex, uh, um, it's not so complex in concept, but basically there's a fundamental din like this. Let's say that I owe you 
And I also own a building worth $50,000. I owe you $10,000 and I irresponsibly uh, sell a building to somebody else. I really owed you, owed you that money. So you now have a $10,000 lien on that property. I'm allowed to sell, I guess. I'm allowed to sell. I really should have paid you back. So my property, right, on 123 Main Street is a $50,000 building, but you have a $10,000 lien on that property because I really owe you money. And I irresponsibly did not give you a percentage of that building like I should. So how does it work for you to collect your lien? Umigba me'emas gavya. Where can a person collect a lien from? Amar of Huna, mana masai mina erusin. He can collect from a ksuba that is either 100 or 200. We know, of course, that a ksuba is either 100 for a be'ula, for a woman who is no longer a virgin, or 200 for a besula. Um, and, and any additional monies that one might add into their ksuba, that they can only collect after the marriage has been consummated. So there's two parts of this ksuba. One is the baseline that we all put in our ksubas. Let's just say 200 suits for now. And then there are some people who say, I love my wife so much. It's their, it's her prenuptial, basically. Basically, I'm also giving you an extra 10,000 if I ever divorce you. 10,000 suits, whatever, it's fine. So then you can use the first part of that ksuba by Arisen to collect on a lien. And the second part of that ksuba only by Nisuin to collect on a lien. Says the Gemara, You have to wait until they're fully married to, to pull on that ksuba, to actually uh, uh, to employ your lien. Says the Gemara, Does Rav Huna really hold that? After all, how can you say that? Let's say that a woman can produce two ksubas. One of them is masayim and one of them is one of them is Shloshmos, excuse me. One of them is 200 zoos. One of them is 300 zoos. Vam Rav Huna, Basa Legavos Masayim, if one tries to collect from the Ksuba that has 200, Gove Mizman Rishon, you should be collecting from the Erusin. Shalosh Me'oz, if you're trying to collect 300, Gove Mizman Sheni, you should be collecting from the time of Nisuin. Vimisa, if in fact it's true that the base money that the, that the Mea or the Masayim is collected by Erusin, and the Tosefas money is collected by Nisu. And if that's true, Tigbi Masai Mizman Rishon, Umeya Mizman Sheni, then the total that he should have collected was only 300, 200 from the first, from the Arisin, and 100 later, totaling 300. Because after all, it's really only, it's not two staros, it's, it's really, it's just really one star. It says the Gemara, the Tamech, according to your reasoning, really, if you're going to say that they should collect at different times, she, he, he, this person's going to make bank. Tigbi Chamesh Meos Kulam, they should be able to collect 200 plus 300, not up to 300. Masai Mizman Rishon, you should be able to collect 200 from the beginning, from the Arisin. Tlas Mea Mizman Sheni, you should be able to collect 300 from the later part, from the from after they're married. But we, of course, don't do that. Why can't you make 500 off the deal? Because because that's not what the star said. The star didn't say I'm giving you 200 plus an extra 300. It was 200 plus 100 equals 300, not 500. So Achi Kamarla, this is really what he's saying. If you want to collect on my lien, that's great. You want to collect on the Ksuba, then if you're going to do it at the time of Erisin, then you get 200. If you're going to collect by the time of Nisuin, then you can collect 300. Turning to the top of Memdal and Amadalev, Because he said, I'm not adding money to you. This is, uh, I'm not giving you 200 plus 300. I'm only giving you 200 plus 100. And achule achil say When I'm giving you money in the later moment, I'm dissolving our pre your previous ksuba. You have two ksubas, one for 200, one for three. You want to collect later, you get 300, but then you don't get the 200. It's either or. The 200 is now at the Arisin, and the 300 is later at the Nisuin. Omar Mar, uh, a reference to Ravuna, Rashi says on the side, for, uh, seven lines down in Rashi, he says it's talking about Ravuna. Omar Mar, Ra, Ra, Ravuna was the one who said, Iboya Bahai Gavya, Iboya Bahai Gavya, that he can collect from uh, from either of the Ksubas. So it says the Gemara, Lema Pliga de Rav Nachman. This seems to not match with the sheets of Rav Nachman. Why? Because Rav Nachman has a general rule when it comes to Shtaros. Dama Rav Nachman, Shte Shtaros, Hayotzin Bezacharze. If a person produces, Two shtaros, two contracts for the same exact issue. So it says the Gemara, Bitel Sheni Harishon. By definition, we just simply look at the date on the contract. The most recent contract will nullify and destroy the older contracts, always. A hard, hard and fast rule. So therefore, if that's true, 
then that must not be like our case. Because in our case, he said, oh, you can collect from the first ksuba. You can collect from the second. Don't worry about it. Pick whichever one you want. That's not Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman says the first ksuba is not even worth the paper it's written on. Nothing. It's a zero. La says the Gemara, that's not a good argument. Lav mi itmar Allah amar apapa umode Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman actually agrees. Di osif be dikla letosefes ksave. That if he adds even one tree into the contract, let's say it's a real estate contract, you have the entire space, 100 meters by 100 meters. But in the second contract, it says 100 meters plus 100 meters plus a tree. So once there's any change in the contract at all, hachanami ha'osif lemidi, the second star adds something a little bit different. It said 300 instead of 200. So when <laughs> the two contracts are identical, identical so then i that's i got it then we we just nullify the first one but that's not the case here there were differences now let's analyze this a little bit more gufa says the gemara quarter of the way down memdal and Madalif, heading toward the mishnah amar of nachman we had just said a moment ago if you have two contracts one that looks just like the other then the first one is uh, is nullified Amar Papa, we had just said, again, Rav Nachman himself would agree that if you add something new to the second contract, then all is well and good. And let's analyze this still more. Pshita, I could understand, Rishon B'Mecher, if the first uh, contract was actually a sale of, let's say, of a house, Visheni B'Matana, and the second contract was the gifting of a house, that's valuable. Liyapos Kocho Hu Dekasavla, that actually makes the case stronger for someone, Mishum Dina De Bar Metzra. What's Bar Metzra? Bar Metzra is a din that if I, uh, uh, let's say I own a house, I'd say I own my house, 3113 West Chase. And next to me, Scotty Shayer is my immediate neighbor. If Scotty wants to move, I get first right of refusal on his property. Okay, that's Bar Metzra, is that I am, Rabbi Robinson had this Allah with his house, but it was a whole long story. Anyways, that's that's the din, is that I have to say to Scotty, uh, Scotty has to say to me, if Scotty says, is Scotty moving? Just let's, let's, let's just say he's not moving, unless he goes to Israel, because that's possible. Uh, we're getting too political here. So let's just say that Scotty uh, moves. So he has to come to me and say, Phil, house is on the market for X, X amount of hundreds of thousands of dollars. First right of refusal. That's the din of Bar Mitzvah. But it's only true if it's a contract real estate sale. If he gifts the house to someone else, there's no Bar Mitzvah. Bar Metzra is only a din when money is changing hands. So that's why the Gemara says, I could understand a case scenario where when I when Scotty purchased the house, he bought the house with money. And now he's leaving the house, he's gifting it to somebody else, then Bar Metzra doesn't get triggered. So I understand that. No problem. And the opposite is also true. Kol uh, Shekain, all the more so, Rishon Bematan, Avesheni Bemecher. And if a person, let's say Scotty was gifted the house, uh, and then he, then he wants to sell it later, that we understand as well. Darminan, there will be a bar metzra there. Mishum Dina de Balchov, who the Kosov came, because he has a fixed amount of what the value is of the house. Great. Ela Ishnehem Bemecher, Shnehem Bematana. But if both of them are the same type of contract, Bitel Sheni Esarishon, that is where Rev Nachman will say that the uh, that the first contract is bad. So it says the Gemara, my time. Why was Rav Nachman of the opinion that a latter uh, star will always invalidate a prior star? So he says there's two possible reasons. Rav from Omar, Amar Oduye Odile. What does that mean? Rashi explains that we know that the Adim on the first star were Mizuyafin. They were forgers. They were not good Adim. So that's why Rav Zera says that somebody must have had a reason to create a new star. It must have happened. Why would somebody, remember, this isn't a printing press. They are taking a quill. They are taking parchment. It's painstaking. It's annoying. And they have to go into, why are they redoing the star? So Rav says, it must be that Rav Nachman's concerned that the Adam in the first star were, were bad Adam. What about Rav Acha? Rav Acha Amar, Amar uh, Ichule Achle Lishiabude. He says, oh, no, because maybe there was a lien on the first document and he didn't want the lien to be on the first document. So they made a new star to make it so that the lien, well, okay, the changes in the, in the fine print. Okay, that's fine. My Benayu, what's the difference between these two, two answers of bad Adim and changing the, the fine print of the star? One is that there are bad witnesses. Another one is, says the Gemara, paying fruits. What does that mean? It means that really the star was bad from the beginning. So if all you had was the first star, then the first guy is still, is still responsible for the property. So if there are any fruits that were needed to be paid for, he needs to pay for them. Ulataska, and as it relates to taxes as well, that would also be an afgamina. 
My have a lot ksuba. How do we paskin in regards to this, these ksubas of our Mishnah? Says the Gemara, Tashma, the Amar of Yehudam or Shmuel, Mishum Rebbe Lazar, Reb Shimon. Mana Masaymi no Erisin v'Tosef Asminani Suin. This is a Machlokes Tanaim. What the first Shita says that the principal money of the star of the ksuba, the one hundred for the beula and the two hundred for the besula, that can be corrected, collected mina erusin. The tosef has any extra monies is mina nisuin. The chachamim omrim echad zev echad zev mina nisuin. The hilchasa how do we paskin like the chachamim? The chachamim omrim echad zev echad zev mina nisuin. And that answers up our mishnah, which we discussed on the on mem gimel amid beis. That if a person wants to collect on a lien on a on a ksuba, they can do that no problem. The core. The core price of the of the mana or masayim, the base price of 100 or 200 for a non-basula and a basula respectively, that can be collected by the erusin, and anything else has to be collected by the nisuim. On Shabbos, we have a unique time for share. It's at 5 o'clock. Baruch Hashem, we have a, a simcha mir Hashem on Sunday. My sister Rebecca, her son Avery's getting married. That's why my uncle Charles is in town. Welcome. You can't tell that they're related. They're related. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, so therefore, we have a shallow shit. So we're going to do dafiyomi at 5 o'clock on Shabbos. We'll be done by 6. Uh, so I know it's kind of smack middle of the afternoon. I'm sorry, but I have no other way to teach it. So that's what it's going to be. Wishing you all a beautiful night.